All right, so we're going to be doing uh, going through Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Sounds like Zion's coming. Sounds like Corbin. Let's see. Let's see what it is. All right. So, just for context, if someone can read uh, verses, um, chapter 1, verse 27, through chapter 2, verse 3. To whom God willed to make known what is, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. Chapter 2. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have on your behalf, and for those who are at Laodicea, and for those who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All right. Um, so... Um, we start in verse 1, it says, <clears throat> for I want you to know, right? Um, obviously, pa Paul is pointing out to the to the brothers in Colossians that he wants them to know something, right? Uh, he wants them to know, right? Uh, and he really wants to make this obvious to them. Um, he wants them to, to perceive with their eyes, to perceive with their senses, to discern, to discover um, that, that, that there is a great struggle, right? Um, that he himself, Paul, is having a great struggle. Um, and, and Paul uh, is, is showing the saints that this, this, there was a struggle, that this is not a walk in the park, right? That, that this is no light task, right? Um, and he's essentially continuing on with this, this, this imagery of, of a, of like a, a sports metaphor. If we look at verse twenty nine, it says, "For this purpose also I labor, striving according to His power, which mightily works in me." These are these are imageries of of, of like sports. He's he, he wants to show these brothers that uh, that that this is hard work. Um, that that the struggle that is within him uh, is 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 a deep struggle, right? He has a deep concern uh, for these brothers, right? Obviously, we know that he has not met these uh, saints in person, um, but it doesn't change the fact that that he's still struggling for them, right? He's showing uh, and he's displaying uh, a deep sense of concern and a deep sense of love for these saints, um, in Colossians 1.25, it says, Of this church I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit, so that I might fulfill, uh, that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. Right? So Paul knew that uh, God has ordained him to, uh, to, to be a minister, to steward the word um, and, and, and to proclaim the word amongst, you know, all, all, all men, but, but especially to those who are, who are in the faith, right? He wants them to maintain their faith. He wants them to walk in, a, in accordance with, with what the scriptures um, say. Um, and so Paul, in his mind, he was, he was, he was very narrow-minded in the sense that God has uh, given him a mission to to proclaim the gospel, and he's going to do it, right? And that's that's what he that's what he wants to do. Nothing's going to prevent him from preaching the gospel, from showing deep concern for his, for his brother and for, for those who are in Christ, right? And Paul's and Paul's Paul's eyes 
or in Paul's book, there was no excuses, right? Just because he was not there with them doesn't mean that he's not going to love on them and show concern for them and write to them and, and struggle, as he says, right? Even though he's not there, there's still a struggle within him, right? Uh, he's still um, a, a concerned for, 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 the, for the condition and, and for the, 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 the conflict that is sort of going on um, it, at the Church of Colossians, right? Or at the Church of Colossae. Um, and, uh, like, as I'm reading this, I'm imagining, like, it would be very hard for me to, to struggle for, for brothers that I don't know or I have not seen, right? Only, I've only merely heard of them, heard of the testimony from Epaphras, um, but I, I have not come to know them. But yet he's still uh, very uh, concerned for them, right? Um, and obviously, like, we know that, that Paul has been praying. Um, Paul has written this letter. Uh, Paul has heard from Epaphras. Paul has given counsel to Epaphras. Uh, the main reason why, why, uh, why he's writing this is because there is, there is a concern for what he has heard from Epaphras. Obviously, obviously he's heard good news that, that these brothers have received the gospel. But then, obviously, Epaphras has gone to them also for counsel, for wisdom, to see what he ought to do as these, these men are, are straying, as these men are entertaining other 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 messages uh, that, that 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 are outside of Christ, uh, and so these are some of the things that that Paul is beginning to struggle with. Right, uh, he, he's he's seeing that th- this is this is not where where they need to be um, walking walking on or walking toward. Right, this is not going to lead to the things that he's hoping for the Church of Colossae. Um, he he writes in um, in um, we already read it in verse twenty nine. I labor, striving according to his power. Right, this this language uh, of him working and and him laboring for these saints um, is something that that is. A reoccurring theme throughout the the, the book of Colossians. Um, someone read Colossians four twelve. Every preface who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. So, is, is Paul the only one that shows concern? No, right? right. Paul is not, is, he's not an exception, right? It's not something that, you know, merely the pastor um, or pastors have... Um, have to be concerned over the saints. No, this is this is something that all believers should be concerned for all other believers, right? We should all be showing uh, a sense of care, concern, a sense of love for one another. And Epaphras is in the same boat, right? He he is laboring earnestly so that they would return and and remain firm on on the message that they initially heard, right? Um, and so, more so, questions that we ought to be asking ourselves is, can we say that, that we have struggled uh, for saints within our body? Uh, never mind the people that are outside of our local body that we have not seen, but have we struggled for, for those within our body? Can you say that you have, have, been, have, have, have been laboring, you have been struggling in, in instances where, where brothers are falling away, our, our brothers are are in are in are going through trials. Have you struggled over those things? Um, is this the attitude that you have when you when you come and and and, and, and you are in communion um, with with the other saints? All right? Um, are you? Do you seek to know what God commands of you in regards to the saints? Are you? Are you? Are you? As a, as a believer, seeking to learn 
different ways in which you can serve the body, different ways in which you can fulfill the commands that God has given to us in, in order to, 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 to maintain that unity, in order to, to love and to walk in that love that, that we read of uh, in the scriptures. Um, we, we went through a whole Bible study on, on duties of Christian fellowship Those are by John Owen, and those were all practical ways that, that we can love on one another. Does anyone remember any of the, 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 the rules that, that John Owen gave us in terms of loving one another? <laughs> this is very easy. <laughs> Wasn't one of them um, like telling each other the truth? Yep. Yeah. Confronting, uh, confronting, sin, confronting sin, um, or exhorting uh, brothers. Even aside from the book, what are ways that we can uh, love one another? Right. That is that was one of the rules that 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 John Owen had listed that we ought to pray for one another. What else? Serve one another. Serve one another. Right. Another one of the rules he broke it down. But if any of us are in need, right? We read Acts. We saw how they treated one another when when they were in need. What did they do? They they sold they sold their belongings to provide for the need of those who who were in need in the body. Um, Anything else? Yes. Fellowship. Yes. That, that was one of the rules, right? Not forsaking uh, the assembly of the saints, right? If you, if you forsake the assembly of the saints, then, then there's no way that you're going you're gonna to struggle for a saint if, if you don't even have a relationship with them. Uh, and so these are all different ways in which we can grow in love for one another. And as we grow in love, then when something does, does go wrong, uh, or if something goes wrong, then we're, we're going to struggle. We're going to have a, a, a deep struggle within, within our hearts because we love that saint uh, so much that, that we don't want them to be in that position that they're in. And so we're going to do everything we can uh, to pull them out. Uh, to point them to Christ, to remind them of, of the truths of the scriptures. What is it that might drive us uh, to labor in this manner? You know, what is, what's going to drive us to, to, to have such deep, deep concern for one another? That, that if someone, str so someone, someone struggles, then we struggle with them. What's going what's gonna to build that? Yes. The desire to want to be like Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what else? We're remembering like what Christ did for us. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, spending time with the the people that you're concerned about. Yes. Motivated by love. Yeah. Um, uh, those are all, all all good things, and I think the the motivating factor is that that we're all in Christ right uh, because we are all in Christ uh, there's not going to be um, any any differences in how we we treat one another right we're just going to you're in Christ you're struggling you're hurting I'm also hurting right um, for for Paul and Paul's situation he, even though he didn't see them and, and physically know them he still struggled for them. And it was because he knew that these brothers were in Christ and they were straying. And so what he wanted is that they would return. They would return to, to the truth um, and that they would, that they would grow in, in the knowledge of who God is, right? That they would not seek to, 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 to look for a different gospel, to, to look for a greater fulfillment as, as was being preached to them. Um, Paul, obviously, he knew that it would be easier to meet them face to face, right? It would, he would be able to accomplish much more if he, was, he, was in, he, he had a personal relationship with them, phys, like a physical personal relationship. But 
he, he didn't get that opportunity to, to meet with them yet. Uh, and, and because he didn't get that opportunity, you know, he, he used whatever means he had to, to, to get to them, right? He wrote this letter, you know, and he, he prayed for them. Uh, he had Epaphras reporting to him. And, and whatever means God gives us, that is the means that, that we should use. Like, sometimes we, we find ourselves saying, like, if it's not in a certain situation, then I'm not going to help, right? Then I'm not going to love, then I'm not going to care. Uh, but Paul is showing us that no matter the situation, he's, he's going to cultivate and develop a relationship with saints, right? Because they are saints, because they are in Christ. He cares for all saints all over the world uh, exactly the same. Um, and he is going to love on them and, and, and be hurt when, when, when they are hurting. Move on to verse 2, which is where we're going to spend most of our time. And he says, that their hearts may be encouraged, right? So Paul in verse 2 is showing us why he is really struggling. Uh, he, is, he, he is struggling because he, he cares deeply for their spiritual, well, their spiritual welfare, right? This is the reason that, that Paul is laboring and, and struggling, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, right? Uh, he wants the saints to be uh, united. Uh, he wants them to be encouraged to remain united. Uh, he wants them to be of one mind, of one body, of, of one accord as believers. And so he's writing this letter to encourage their hearts, right? Uh, and when, when we speak of encouragement, what is it that we're actually doing when, when we encourage one another? Building them up. Mm-hmm. Yes. What else? Stirring up affections for Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reminding each other of the truths in the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? Yes. Being our brother or sister's keeper. Mm-hmm. What else? Anyone else? Yes. Loving. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, it would be helpful for us to know what admonish, uh, what, 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 it, what, what are we doing when we're encouraging, right? We're admonishing. We're ex encouraging comes... Encouragement comes through different, different, different means, right? Sometimes it depends on the situation. Sometimes it is a form of exhorting a brother, right, they, or a sister. They may be in sin, and so we need to encourage them by by exhorting them, right, um, to 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 walk in the way which was prescribed in the scriptures. Sometimes it means that we, we need to love on them because they're going through trials, right, and so we're going to encourage them with the promises of God. Sometimes it means that we need to console them, right? Because they're, they're, they may be weeping. They may be going through uh, such and such trials. And so we're there to, to console them. Um, and so we need to keep these things in mind so that we are reminded, I, I need to encourage this brother. And this is how I, I ought, this is how I can encourage this person. These are ways in which I can encourage uh, th these these uh, these brothers or sisters. And in this case, obviously, Paul is sort of in, he's sort of ex exhorting these these brothers um, to 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 stay knit together, to stay knit together in love. Right? Um, Ephesians six twenty two says, <clears throat> "I have sent him to you for this purpose." so that you may know about us and that he may comfort your hearts, right? This is what Paul wants to do. He wants to comfort um, the, the hearts of the believers and, 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 and remind them of what, what they ought to be doing so that they would, they would be knit, knit together in love, right? Obviously, if he, he has to encourage them, it means that there is some sort of discouragement, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're whenever you're looking to encourage always look to see if someone's discouraged because that means they need to be encouraged right um 
And so in, in, in the case of these saints, like he, he, Paul knew that they probably needed it, right? I mean, all different doctrines were coming at them. And, and in a sense, some of them were believing it, some of them weren't. And so it was causing a division. And, and in their case, they were already being uh, um, secluded by, by the Jews, right? The Jews saw, saw these, these Christians as, as, as ones that, that weren't part of the pact, right? They weren't following the laws, uh, uh, the, the laws that they were following. They weren't circumcised. They weren't following certain days, right? They weren't um, as holy as they were. They were following this, this, this Messiah that was a carpenter that died on the cross. And so once they believed in the Christ, they were already secluded. And now, now that, now that these, these brothers are being divided amongst themselves, of course they're going to be discouraged. Imagine, you know, we, we have, we're at grace and, and we, we become divided by half. Of course we're going to be discouraged. If we see half of, our, half of the saints believing something else and possibly leaving, we're not going to be at, at, at ease. We're going to be discouraged. And so Paul wants to encourage them. Uh, to, to, to remain knitted in love, to remain together. Um, and, and this was his form of encouragement. In the eyes of Paul, uh, this was of, of great importance, right? Unity was of great importance to Paul, right? Uh, he knows that if these brothers begin to accept this gospel, this other teaching, um, another teaching that was that's different than what he already initially preached to Epaphras and which Epaphras preached to them, that there, there's going to be disunity. There's going to be division. There's going to, there's going to be, a, uh, it's going to destroy the fellowship that is, that is, that they have, right? Because now, you know, oh, we're all Christian, but, you know, I believe that there is a greater mystery, there is a greater knowledge, a greater wisdom that, that is found in Christ. And, and another group is saying, Christ is all sufficient. Christ is all I need. And so obviously it's going to just destroy the fellowship that they have. And Paul is telling them, no, remain united. Remain in this, uh, remain knitted in love. Um, and, and obviously, he, he, he says, and he's showing us that if they are to re remain united, they must, do so in, they must do so in love, right? They have, to, they have to do it with a genuine care, a genuine concern and love and compassion for one another, right? They can't do this out of compulsion. They can't muster this up. No, they have to do it with a genuineness, just like how he's writing this letter to them in all genuineness with, with a genuine love. This is what he's calling them to do, to love on one another, right? This unity within our bodies ought not to be forced, right? Obviously, we know that when the Spirit of God abides in us, it's going to, to be genuine. It's going to come not out of us, but out of the Spirit that is abiding in us. Um, and so this ought not to be forced, right? Right. We're not always going to have uh, those desires to love on one another. And so we ought to pray. Pray that the Lord might help us. Pray that, that, that He might help us to, to, to be genuine with one another, right? There's going to be times in which we may dislike or have, you know, um, certain feelings towards certain people. And obviously you you cannot overcome that naturally, but um, by the Lord's help, you can, you can overcome it. You can see past it. You can let love cover it. Uh, and, 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 and that unity within the body can be knitted and can remain. Um, but it has to be something that we're intentionally working toward, right? And asking the Lord for help uh, to, to, to help us in this area. And so Paul is displaying this, this love to them. Uh, what are some things uh, that, that, that hold us from such unity? 
What are some things that, that have held you in the past from, from, from having unity within the body? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Uh, bitterness, yes. Pride. You can be very prideful about something. I'm not going to do that because they didn't ask me or for whatever reason, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I think pride is, is is definitely a huge one, right? Sometimes we can deem ourselves to be holier than other people. And so uh, this person may not be on my level. And so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to spend much time with him. I'm not going to love on this person. What else? Sometimes uh, insecurity. Like maybe feeling others are too smart or too wise or maybe someone's really shy and, you know, it's not that sociable. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, sometimes it is that, you know, we may come off that way, but sometimes it's just presuming, right? Um, that may not necessarily be how that brother or sister, you know, is trying to portray themselves, but you're presuming that, you know, that this person's too smart, this person's too holy, and you're not, you're not making that, that effort to, to get to know that person and to see who that person in, who that person is. And so you're judging your whole relationship based off presumption, you know. What else? <laughs> yes. Selfishness. Yes. And selfishness is, is a big thing, right? Like, sometimes we only have time for ourselves, our jobs, our family, and the, the family of God is, goes out the window, right? Like, if I have time, then, I, then I'll get to them. If I don't, then, you know, maybe next Sunday. Um, so, so these are all things that uh, we ought to keep watch for, right? Uh, keeping watch for selfishness or pride for, for, for sometimes envy. Um, all these things are, are going to keep us from, from disunity. What else though, in the context of this, of this, what else will, will keep us disunited, uh, keep us, uh, from being united? Differences in doctrine or you know, specific views, secondary issues. Right. Um, so that's what that's what that's what it is in this case, right? It's different doctrines. You believe in different things. You're so vocal. You're so adamant about a, a particular doctrine that might be secondary or or even um, not even secondary. It might be even further down the line. And you're so gun ho that you. You prevent others from, 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 from wanting to, to talk to you, from wanting to fellowship with you. Um, but obviously, doctrine that, that, um, that, that uh, goes against the gospel is going to, to create division. Uh, and so, these are things that we ought to keep watch for. Well, Paul knew that if there are other brothers who claim to have found spiritual riches, uh, other spiritual riches, other spiritual knowledge, other spiritual wisdom, that, that the, church, the church unity would naturally be disrupted, right? Because there's going to be those who have a superior knowledge in their eyes, and there's going to be those who have Christ's wisdom and knowledge. And so they're just going to divide. Uh, and so he's exhorting them, to remain knitted, right? And he knew that this is going to be, if if they have different doctrines, differences of, of, of a core doctrine, that it was going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for them to remain united. Um, and so he's exhorting them, remain in love, remain knitted. Uh, but not only are you to love one another, he then says, and attaining all the wealth that comes from full assurance of understanding, right? So we see here that we're not only called to, to be united in love, but this unity, it includes being united in the truth, right? If we are, if we are, if we are as a body are united in truth, then we can also be united in love. Like they go hand in hand, Right? Uh, the the body that continues to grow and to and and the body that continues to prosper in in, in understanding uh, uh, and having a proper understanding of the gospel, 
they're they're gonna be united because they're gonna have one common goal, which is uh, to bring glory to God, right? And and it's, it's it's simply about God and what God has done for us, and we're all going to deem ourselves as sinners that have been saved by grace, right? Uh, not not nothing that we have done, but everything that Christ has done. And so if we remain firm on that truth, on, on the truth of the scriptures, on the truth of the gospel, then that's going to naturally lead to unity, right? The more we grow, the more we know and believe and have a firm um, understanding of the, of the scriptures and of the gospel, uh, the more is going to stir us to, 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 to have an assurance as believers, right? We're going to be assured of, of who we are, of who Christ is, of what Christ has done, um, of who we are in relationship, in relation to one another, right? We're all adopted children um, that have been redeemed by Christ. Uh, and so we begin to see each other as brothers and sisters um, and, and, and nothing more, right? Um, so the more that we, we grow in, in, in the knowledge of, of the scriptures and the knowledge of the gospel, the more, the more firm we're going to be uh, in our faith. Um, and in turn, this is going to lead to many spiritual blessings. It's going to lead to, to having a, f- a more firm and a more settled uh, conviction and a more um, firm assurance on the truth of, that we hold collectively as believers, right? If, if, we, if we as believers have such a firm conviction, then it's not going to be so easy to rock us. It's not going to be so easy for another doctrine to come on in and divide us so easily. No, we together collectively will say, this is not in accord to what we see in the scriptures. And so we will deny that. And we will, we will refute that collectively, right? If we together collectively all believe the same thing, we're all on the same page, then it's it's not gonna it's not gonna creep in this way or this way and cause division. No, we're no matter which way it creeps in, we're all gonna negate it because we all believe the same thing. We're all standing firm on the same thing. But if you know brothers on this area and on this area are, are sort of weak, you know, and no one's tending to them, then then when that doctrine creeps in, they're, they're going to fall for it, right? And then it's going to create division. And so we as a body ought to be seeking to grow in this truth, and not only personally, but we ought to be seeking that the whole church grow in, this, in, in, in the truth. We all, rem, we all grow in our firmness and uh, 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 our assurance in the, in the gospel, Right? Don't just think about yourself and, and yes, I know it. Yes, I'm going to like learn something else. And yes, I'm going to be more firm. No, you, you ought to be bringing that to those who, who, may, who may be weaker in the faith. And, 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 and that's going to unite us all the more as believers. He says in, in Ephes- uh, Paul says in Ephesians 1.18, I, I pray uh, that your hearts may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So the way that we as believers are going to have or, or grow in our assurance or have full assurance is, is by, by, by growing in our faith, right? By trusting in the grace that God has provided, by, by trusting in the mercy that God has provided through Christ, right? It is by surrendering all of our efforts and, 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 and just going back to the same message that, that we've initially heard and just depending on that message, right? By surveying the cross um, and recognizing that apart from Christ, we are nothing. Apart from Christ, we there there can be no love and there can be no unity uh in in this body and so we cling to nothing but christ and and that message that he has given us Uh, 
he goes on to say, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. Uh, so what is the result of being encouraged and being knit together and growing in unity and attaining full assurance? Well, Paul tells us that, that we receive the true knowledge of God's mystery, right? Christ himself is the mystery of God, right? He's not just a clue or he's not just the key. He is the mystery himself, right? False teachers in the Colossians would say that, that he, was, he was just pointing um, to the mystery, but he himself was not the mystery. They were seeking for a, a deeper uh, and a more superior mystery than, than that which is of Christ. But we as believers and those within the, Coloss within the church of Colossians, those who depended solely on Christ, they knew that Christ was that mystery. That, th that there was nothing else that they needed to look for, that, that he, that Christ himself, uh, that they would be, that, that he is a, a never ending mystery that, that we would never fully comprehend, that we will, um, we can continue to search and search and search. And uh, we in our, in our finite minds won't fully comprehend, but, but it's all found in him. Right, it's all found in Him and the gospel that He has laid out for us, uh, and so Paul uh, is saying that this is the result uh, that we receive Christ Himself, that we receive a communion with Christ, and the more that we continue, uh, continue and persevere in 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 communion with 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 our God and communion with the saints and communion uh, with other believers, uh, the more we will, we will receive of, of, of God's mystery, the more we're going to receive of Christ himself. Um, any questions or thoughts as we wrap up um, verse 2? All right. Verse uh, 3. Then he goes on to say, In whom are hidden... All treasures of wisdom and knowledge, um, right? So, so Paul finishes this section of scripture, and essentially he's refuting what these what these false teachers were teaching, right? This is this is what the uh, the Christians in Colossians or Col Colossae would be troubled by, right? They were they were being influenced by teachers. Who, who were telling them to seek treasures or wisdom and knowledge that was not found in Christ, that was found outside of Christ, right? And, and that they were not found simply in Jesus. And, and Paul is saying, no, no, no. All, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. They are found in Him. And so seek Him. Seek nothing else. Nothing outside of him is going to, to, to give you the, the wisdom and knowledge that you are looking for. Everything else that, that these men are, 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 are proposing to you, it's fleeting, right? It was a, it was a fleeting wisdom and knowledge. Um, it was not superior than the knowledge that we, that we find in Christ Jesus, right? When we read through the Gospels and we see all of Christ's responses, like there is no, no greater response that responses that that we see than that which Christ provided. Every time they try to trip him up, they try to catch him, uh, they try to stone him or find an excuse to, to to hang him on a cross. He provided perfect answers that 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 this even stumped me to this day. Like how you know how did he come up with this answer? Like why is it so perfect? Uh, and it was because Christ is, is he is the treasure of, of, of wisdom and knowledge. Um, and so the question is, what need is there, what, 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 what greater need is there than, than that which is found in Christ, right? Christ is God manifest. And all wis wisdom originates in Christ, 
right? That is the reason why he was able to provide all these responses because wisdom originates in him, right? And, 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 and these men are proposing wisdom and knowledge, but it originates in Christ. And so why, see, why seek anywhere else, right? Um, these, these teachers are focused on, on, on wisdom and knowledge, but Paul, Paul's aim and Paul's goal is that they would, they would focus on Christ. That Christ, in, in Christ, we would be sufficient, that we would find everything that we need, right? We tend to do this many times in, in our walk. We always try to find or look elsewhere, right? We, we, we may step away from the church, we may step away from the scriptures to find uh, this, this fulfillment, this purpose to our lives, but it's, it's found in Christ. We may try to find peace and rest outside of Christ, but it's in Christ. So why are we looking anywhere else? And Paul is in essentially telling them the same thing here. Like, why look anywhere else? It's, it's found in Christ. Christ is the, the perfect storehouse of, of all knowledge and of all wisdom. And in Christ, we see wisdom and knowledge uh, uh, lifted up, like exalted, uh, because he, he's the perfect demonstration of it. Um, and he says, he says, all which is a word that we ought to focus on. Like, not just some. He says all wisdom and knowledge is found in Christ. Why are you looking anywhere else if all the wisdom and knowledge is found in Christ? Um, Paul is, is very specific when he uses certain words, right? Um, he doesn't use them accidentally. No, he means what he writes, and he does it intentionally. And when he says he, he, that all wisdom and knowledge is found in him, he means it, right? Uh, should we need wisdom and knowledge, then we, we ought to seek it in Christ, right? It's not wrong to seek for, for wisdom or knowledge, but it's wrong when we try to find it outside of Christ. If we need any wisdom or knowledge, then go to Christ for it. Go to the scriptures for it. Seek other brothers for it. Seek counsel from other brothers that are going to point you to the Christ so that you can find that wisdom and knowledge that you may be seeking for, right? Um, and this is what Paul is, 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 is pointing to. This is where he wants them to go. This is where his emphasis is. He's all about Christ. Uh, he's all about the sufficiency of Christ. Uh, he believes that Christ is supreme over all things, uh, and he's showing it in in. in in this, in this, these these few verses that he's writing to them, um, I, um, Romans eleven thirty three says, "Oh, the depths of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments, and unfathomable, unfathomable His ways." Um, Isaiah eleven two says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest in him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Right? Christ is the one that we need, right? Uh, if we if we lean on Christ, if we depend on Christ, if we seek for all these things that, that we are seeking for and and we will find them in Christ and it will lead to, 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 to a pleasing life because then we will begin to live, just like Nick said uh, during his preaching, then we will begin to live as Christ has, 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 cre has created us to live. He has created us to, to find everything, all of our resources, all the spiritual blessings are to be found in Him. And the more we seek them from Him, the more we will begin to live as we were created to live. And so this is what Paul uh, wants of these saints as he writes them. Um, any thoughts, um, comments, or anything before we close up? Yes. Now, are you saying that if in anything, like, uh, let's say, seek, not, wisdom or understanding, but knowledge, let's say it's plumbing or something, well, I, I put this my heart a little bit. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, like, like you know, earthly things. You know, we're gonna seek 
they're not uh, they're not having to do with spiritual things and so we're going to seek outside counsel uh, but obviously we, we we can still um, call upon the Lord to help us to even have the ability the the strength to and the perseverance to to learn those things Seeking someone here who does plumbing rather than going to some, you know, <coughs> not even in the faith to ask this question. Does that remind me of the um, picture about why do we seek outside help from the law when we are going to judge the world? Okay. Yeah, of course. I mean, we would, I mean, if I would definitely like seek someone within the body, you know, rather than go outside the body if I know someone uh, knows it. Yes. I think I was thinking about that too. I was playing up a similar question as well. I think the answer might be in the word treasures, because it says in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It doesn't say all wisdom and knowledge is hidden in Christ, but maybe only those things that are truly worth seeking and finding, which is what treasure is, right? So maybe that's the answer to that. Yeah, well, I think when he says treasures is 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 He's saying all that is worth to find, like all the good stuff that we need, that we're looking for. I mean, obviously, this is what they were proposing, that there was some superior uh, knowledge and, and wisdom. All those things that you're seeking, they're found in Christ. The gold mine that you're looking for is found in Christ. Uh, and so uh, that's what I would say. Any, any other comments or Questions before we close out? So, so that was said in, I mean, it was said specifically <coughs> because of the disputes that had existed between, you know, like, like we had talked about a few, a few lessons ago that the Greeks seek, seek, they're always looking for something. So he, that's what he's speaking directly to in that. Yeah, yeah, he's refuting, uh, he's refuting all their, um, their teachings by showing that. That, that the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ. And you guys are trying to take them outside of Christ, but they're found in Christ. So, and this, this was specifically at the Gnostics, right? Yes. Yeah. The other thing that struck me is uh, when he talks earlier, he mentions the mis God's mysteries, and then in verse 3 it says, in whom are hidden. It's like he's using their language, because that mm -hmm. their whole thing was about mystery, mm -hmm. and you have to attain the secret knowledge and all that stuff. So it's like he was using their, their knowledge to either directly mm -hmm. refute them or to have for the people who were on the fence and going to follow them, and maybe pull them back into the fold using the same language like the enemy. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, he's using that that language uh, as as in a way of assault um, to to the false teachers' teachings. Um, all right, with that being said, I will close this out in prayer. Our Lord and God, we, uh, uh, we thank you. We <coughs> praise you that uh, you have redeemed the people like us. Um, you have justified us. Uh, you are sanctifying us, and you will one day glorify us. Uh, and Lord, I pray that as you have us here now, I pray that we will labor um, amongst one another, uh, to maintain a unity uh, knitted in love, uh, knitted in the knowledge of, uh, of the gospel. I pray, O oh God, that we would not uh, seek anything outside of, of Christ, uh, that we will realize that, um, that you are the supreme, um, the supreme being, uh, that, that all is found in Christ, uh, that we can find all rest and hope and peace in Christ. Uh, and so, Lord, I pray that um, that any time we would stray, that you would bring us back to the truth, O oh God, uh, and that you would cause us to, to live lives that, uh, that bring glory to your name. Uh, and I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.